Today we're going to look at an inflammatory article in the Daily Telegraph by the Secretary of State for the Department of Business and Trade and the Minister for Women and Equalities, Kemi Badenoch, who I've got a small crush on, by the way, don't tell my wife. And here it is. I'm going to cover this in three parts. We're going to leap through the article like an Alaskan salmon. Then we're going to have a watch of a film with a woman who has a massive issue with the progressives and the way that they have marginalised minority communities. And the last bit then, it actually covers the Royal Air Force in this article. And I will just highlight one of my other films that I did for you so you can go and get some more information if you want. Compulsory pronouns and rainbow lanyards are not the way to foster inclusion. Now, remember the group captain uh, did this at RAF Bryce Norton, put the only uh, rainbow crossing in on a military base in the whole of Europe. They're not the way, as she said, to foster inclusion at all. And I think she's absolutely right here. You know, I've been against DNI now for many, many, many years. Having taught many different people, many different sexes in the military on fast jets for a long time. The main thing in the article, she says, most employers mean well, but clumsy diversity drives are no subject proper action. What I believe she's trying to say here is what I say is there's a lot of idiots at the top of these businesses or the top of the military or in the top of government have absolutely no place being there. And they've caused considerable amount of harm to any kind of race relations or any relationship between sexes as well. In 2021, a manager at Lloyds Bank took an internal EDI course during which he asked how he should handle a situation where someone from an ethnic minority background uses a word that would be considered offensive if that word was said by a white person. And she says that word was the N word. I would say on my channel what that word is. I've got no problem with it, but I'd never get any kind of sponsorship on the video. And therefore, these videos wouldn't make about 90 quid a month. It's absolutely ridiculous, YouTube. Don't have a YouTube channel, guys. It makes, uh, honestly, I could prove it to you, 90 pounds a month it makes. Less than that sometimes. Um, so the word that she's talking about is this one here, Guy Gibson's dog. Actually, an interesting thing about this that annoys me, it says here, the RF said it did not want to give provenance to an offensive turn that went against its ethos. So they replaced that headstone, didn't they, back in 2020. Incredible. You just want an air force or a military just to say, no, we're not doing that. This was the name we're standing by it but the air force is not the air force i used to serve in it's the air force of the new world and we know what that new world's like don't we so basically lloyd's obviously branded him a racist it's easy to do that and they uh dismissed him for gross miscontact now it's interesting that one really because we hear that word being thrown around around by the black community especially in rap videos music videos the whole time i don't believe anyone owns a word and in the comments down there you tell me if you think they do i'm not prepared to live in a society where some people can't say some words and some people can couldn't care less not going to happen to me if you if you call someone it yes that's offensive i fully understand that but if you use the word of course it's not offensive because you're using it in the way that it's being used here in the article you have to use that what if my mum said what's the n-word mean tim i'd have to say it wouldn't i I'd have to say it to my mum. I'm not calling anyone it. I'm just telling what the word is. Of course you can use words. Anyway, you got a lot of money for it and fair play to the boy. But it's not an isolated incident. Several years now, uh, Kemi has read reports of employers misapplying equality laws under the guise of EDI initiatives. The Air Force did this. I did a lot of work on this. End of the video, guys. I will put up one of the ones to give you some uh, heads up on that. She goes on to say that most employers mean well when they do this. I just think there's stupid people at the top. And I do honestly believe there are some people up there with nefarious and ulterior motives. There's a lot of snake all about. A government minister found the training materials for one of their department quangos included references to outmoded concepts like unconscious bias, white privilege, and use a picture of someone holding a placard saying white silence costs lives. These people... We, you know what's happening. It's a takeover. We, we've talked about this before, haven't we? Subversion in the upper elements of our government. She talks about rooting out the rubbish. I'll cover a little bit of this, but I want to play you this film. It's quite an interesting one. And uh, she does go on to say here that um, the government has set up an independent inclusion at work panel to address the issue of the frequency of all these incidents that are happening so that they can remain more vigilant and try and root out this rubbish. I don't think they're very successful the panel was made up of private and public sector experts and was advised by a leading professor at harvard university if you remember uh, claudine gay was the boss at harvard that got sacked you remember that recently so how good is that really to employ one of these people it's a grift it's a grift guys i told you it was a grift I told you it was a grift a long time ago honestly she tasked the panel we're looking at the latest research to understand how employers in britain are applying edi and how we can help them improve their practice our goal was clear 
diversity and inclusion should never put an individual or group at a disadvantage and should never damage cohesion and morale in the workplace. Well, tell that to the white guys that write to me all the time about not getting in or also the minorities that write to me to say they never apply because they couldn't guarantee they would get into the Royal Air Force on their own merit. They thought it was going to be about their skin colour, so they left. They didn't even they didn't even apply. They pulled out of the, um, the employ. Well done, Air Force, for doing that. Absolutely ridiculous. And it wasn't just the Air Force. It was the Navy. It was the Army. It was everyone. Of course it was. The panel published the report today much of it makes for concerning reading. The UK, this is fascinating to me. I didn't know this. The UK has seen an explosion of EDI roles in organisations. Studies found that UK employers almost twice, it employs almost twice as many EDI workers per head than any other country. The fuck is that shit? The same analysis estimates that EDI jobs in our public services are costing the taxpayer at least half a billion pounds per year. Well, it's probably better, isn't it, than the six million a day for the immigrants living in hotels. While millions are being spent on these initiatives, many popular EDI practices, such as diversity training, have little to no tangible impact in increasing diversity or reducing prejudice. In fact, this is what I've been saying. Many practices have not only been proven to be ineffective, they've also been counterproductive. They're driving the wedge between communities, as I've said before. And I'll play this film just briefly, guys. I've got to stay in the corner for copyright issues, I'm sure you're aware. But let's play the film, have a listen to it, and then we'll finish off with just checking out the Royal Air Force bit. The Democratic Party, they promote black women, mm -hmm. yeah, particularly if she's a lesbian. Yes. They promote black women who are not even qualified. Mm -hmm. We have seen with the diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is really racism, which is really saying, well, black people just darn it, they're, they're not smart enough, so we have to give them handouts. And you're pushing black women who are not qualified. Dr. Claudine Gay of Harvard. Now the head of diversity at Harvard is also accused, if I have it correctly, of plagiarism. But the black man, where is he? That's done deliberately. And it started really in the 60s where the Democrats pushed policy, right, that said to women, particularly black women, you don't need a man in the home. Yeah. We'll give you more money if, you, if you're single. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in the 70s and I saw the effects. I saw it in the 80s, the broken home. Now it's more dysfunctional home where you have some women with eight children by five different fathers. Exactly. They don't know who their fathers are, in and out. It's, it's, it has almost destroyed the black community. But they're doing it in a different way now. They're promoting black women and want black men to be down here. And I think black men sense that. And they know that Trump relates to them. They relate to Trump very well. Obama was yes. a plant. <laughs> he did nothing for the black community. Has, did he ever come back to Chicago with as much crime to talk to young black men? He doesn't give a damn. Barack Obama is a curse on this nation. So is Joe Biden. We provide the money for his Marxist socialist programs, pushing abortion in Africa and other things. He didn't care about us. That gave rise to Trump because Trump actually listened to us. He actually cares. Like the founders of Black Lives Matter, they don't give a damn about black people. They didn't have to spend one dime to help build a black business. But these lesbians, they bought homes in predominantly white neighborhoods. Yeah. And that lady's talking some sense there. We all know it as well. Hopefully d and is going. But the issue is these people are still going to exist at the top of these organisations. The Unfortunately, the, the Mike Wigstons, the Maria Byfords, the Joe Lincolns, the uh, the Andy Turners. And it takes special people like Elizabeth Nicole, who stepped down in the Royal Air Force. A, an officer with integrity and red blood in her veins took her to step down and lose her job to highlight this destructive process that happened in the Royal Air Force. Look, no group should be worse off. Sadly, even a prestigious and respected institution like the Royal Air Force was recently found to discriminate against white men. Trying to improve diversity, I think they knew what they were doing. No group should ever be worse off because of companies' diversity policies, whether that black woman or white men. Guys, you know where I am. You know you know what I've done about this, all right? The article is, is well worth reading. I'm going to put a video up here. Woo! Have a watch of it. It talks a lot about this kind of stuff, all right? I really appreciate it, guys. Tell me what you think in the comments, all right? I'm always here for it. Lots of love. Tim Davies, Farship Performance.